Hello, this is Meeting with the Mayor, and today we have a special guest, one of our new city commissioners, Omar Quintanilla. Congra uh, congratulations on your, your uh, election. Thanks, and it's nice to be here with you. Yeah, thank you, and you ran unopposed this time. Yeah, I did. That, that was nice. That's the only way to run. That, that, yeah, if you can. You save, you know. save a little money on a campaign and yeah, all those kind of things. I did get to visit with the uh, with the, our, our neighbors from uh, District 3, and uh, and that it, it's always nice to get out and visit with people and, and hear what their concerns are. And, so and you campaign. You came even I did though campaign, yeah, and yeah. So you got to yeah. meet people. You're a little more exactly. relaxed, but you got to campaign. Yeah. Now, you had run for city commission before. I had. I, I ran uh, four years ago, uh, and... and uh, so I knew how the process would, would uh, unfold, and so I was, I was prepared to take it through a, a normal campaign process, but uh, uh, I ran unopposed, and so that, uh, that was great. That's the best way. I, I'm not, I think um, I love public service. I hate campaigning. I'm, mm -hmm. not a, I'm not a good, if it's a politician, I'm not a good, very good at doing that. <laughs> but, uh, so now you're, you've had a couple months under your belt, and, um, but you've had some experience with the city before. And so you were with um, in the CBDG, and you were chairperson. Is that right? That's right. I was on uh, on the community development board, which is the board that makes recommendations on uh, community development block grant funds. And so uh, I was on that board for six years, and, and chaired, I, I got chaired? to chair it for three out of yes. the six years. And it's it's a uh, it's a board that gets you familiar with a lot of the nonprofits in in McAllen. So from the social services standpoint. Uh, it, it really gets you to know the need in our community. And so uh, I was really thankful that I got to, got to serve in that capacity for that amount of time. Yeah, I don't think there's any better training you could get, ever get, even in the United Way, than what the CBDG people do. I know um, I've been on boards where you have to go through United Way, but it wasn't like the CBDG is much more thorough, I thought. Um, from Definitely. The, it, it's, it's a board that does a really good job. They're very thorough, and they analyze each of the nonprofits that are requesting funds and they do an on-site visit and they look at their financial statements it's it's a really thorough process as you as you will know it's an active board too i mean mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend if you really want to get on a board that's, it, they meet, uh, it's really kind of, a, I guess, about a three or four month period where it's very, very active. Uh, if you want to get on a board that exposes you to a lot of different things in the city, especially the nonprofit, so, and that's a great, great way to, to do it. So, and they don't get off the board, my understanding is. It's hard to get people off the CBG <laughs> board, and they yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Now, do you think um, some of that, uh, some of the people serve on their spin off and go to work for, you know, and volunteer for some of the different um, entities that they serve? You know, I think it's possible, uh, especially, you know, companies like, or entities like the United Way. Um, it, it might be to where you're, you're, uh, you're a volunteer for the advisory board, and then you volunteer for the United Way because you have uh, understanding, but obviously you do it after you're yeah. done with, with your term. Uh, but there's a lot of similarities in in uh, advising the nonprofit and then advising a similar nonprofit, and so uh, it's a very worthwhile. Now, I noticed, you know, the other day, the United Way, I said, gee, was, I thought, we, I feel like the United Way because we do 21 agencies off of some either CBDG, General Fund, or Development Corps, and they said, what were you talking about? And I said, yeah, in the old days, you know, that's what Gen United Way was originally created, was to, so you could give one check that's and right. then they would and they do a fantastic job on that but it's uh, I think the charities now have kind of gotten away from that principle and they're out there directly getting monies from cities and uh, fundraisers and those kind of things so it's a little difficult now you're you're a banker yes okay what kind of banker you know I'm a commercial banker uh, and I deal with uh, companies on a daily basis in, in, in their uh, financing needs and uh, I've been doing that for 19 years and so um, uh, I've enjoyed it. You know, I've learned a lot about uh, business and how businesses grow. And, and uh, in today's age, the challenges that, that businesses have. And so uh, I uh, hope to use that, uh, that experience uh, here on my uh, term here as a city commissioner. Well, and you put that good use. You were on the Amigos to Valle board that's right. with, with me. That's right. And uh, that's kind of the uh, Valley um, Housing Authority, if you will. We have yes. different uh, projects in the, all over the valley. So that was a good experience because of the financing and, mm -hmm. and the banker experience. So mm -hmm. you've, um, you've been on groups um, where your experience has really paid off in, in helping mm -hmm. the 
particular group. And I think city commission, we need a banker on the city commission too. We haven't had one for a while, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's important to, to look at the numbers. You know, with, on the Amigos Advaya board, uh, it's, it's not only uh, housing uh, through uh, apartment complexes, but it's the Meals on Wheels pro program, as you know. Uh, and so, you know, it takes, it takes somebody that's looking at the numbers, you know, and the, the details and uh, on, on housing, uh, looking at occupancy and those kind of things. And so, uh, you know, those, I, I hope that my skill set would be a benefit here for the city. Uh, and I hope to use it uh, on all the things that we do here at the city. And, and you know, uh, used to be in the old days, way back in, I think it probably ended in the late 80s, housing authorities were built with HUD funds directly and they'd build projects called low rent projects. And that all went away with the, with the uh, tax credits, which are a very sophisticated process. And so I think, you know, you, I, as we get involved, you got, we got involved more on the political side of it this time. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's opportunities for you to get involved in it from, a, from the financial side and helping some of the nonprofits. Um, um, that I think you will really enjoy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. It's an interesting thing. So that, that's good. You have a financial experience in there. Were you on um, uh, Leadership McAllen? I was. I, okay. uh, I, I think I started off my uh, service to the community, getting to know the city through Leadership McAllen. I was involved in Leadership McAllen Class 20, uh, which was a number of years ago. But yeah, they're uh, like class 38 now. They're like, yeah. Something the, like that. Mid 30s. Uh, and so, it, you know, you get to know uh, a lot of um, the departments within the city and then and then just a little bit about everything else that's going on in the city and so um, it was it was a great organization you get to meet a lot of people too that um, that are really involved in, in, in the city as well so you know I've been speaking I used to speak at it uh, as a city employee as city attorney and then I go as city commissioner mayor and it's good to see a lot of young people involved in that mm -hmm. And I'm trying to keep track of the leadership and how that's coming. So I was, I was so happy to see you were alumni from that and decided to run for office. Definitely. It's a great first step, uh, getting involved in leadership at Uh and then getting involved in the advisory boards that we have available here at the city. Uh, but even though, even if you've been active in the community for a number of years, but just haven't been involved in leadership at um, it, it, it'd be wise uh, and educational uh, for you to get involved in leadership account. So you're a great example of how to prepare yourself for the public office. Um, CBDG volunteer work, leadership McAllen outside, and some uh, and Amigo Savai. So why why um, you were ready? I was ready. I was so ready. what surprised you? <laughs> what surprised me uh, after after starting to serve here? Yeah. Uh, you know, I haven't had a whole lot of surprises yet. I, I think a lot of of um, what I have been doing here um, is, is pretty straightforward. It's, it's things that, uh, that I've seen in serving in other types of committees. I think the only surprise has been uh, you know, the, the speed at which we operate, you know, kind of our, our meetings and that kind of thing, uh, which, which, um, which is why it's, it's so important to, to be ready, you know, those, those big packets that we get uh, before uh, our meetings with the hundreds of documents, that, <laughs> uh, pages of documents that are in it, uh, it, it's really important to get to get into the details and uh, and be ready for the meeting. But you know, our meetings go pretty pretty fast, yeah. and so uh, I, I think the speed at which our meetings operate uh, and initially uh, was 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 a little surprising. But um, but everything else has been pretty smooth, you know. That's why we do workshops, by the way, is right. because we thought, okay, we, let's have an hour where we can spend maybe three or four items, even less, where we can spend the time and then um, uh, kind of in, ask questions in a little more informal process mm -hmm. and then uh, take those up at City Commission later on. I think what most people are surprised when they find out, you know, they think the general fund is the only budget we have. And so mm -hmm. outside the utility board, it's about a $180 million budget with all the enterprise funds. And then you had the utility board, so it's about 240, almost a quarter million, a quarter billion dollars a year mm -hmm. uh, budget. And uh, I always thought that was the important. Um, that's that's where really kind of the money meets the road and yes. stuff. So it's uh, yes, exactly. Those are long meetings, by the way, and I appreciate you attending all of those at, at the golf course. And definitely, it's yeah. uh, in the utility board. We meet, we've been meeting, and um, at some point we're trying to rotate all the commissioners on the mm -hmm. utility board. I think you find it. That's pretty interesting for water and sewer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's pretty complex business in that. Yeah. So, okay, so no surprises. Uh, what's your favorite part of being a city commissioner? 
Yeah, I, I think my favorite part is just getting to visit with people and hearing what their concerns are and, and trying to address them. You know, I, I think that's, that's the most gratifying part is when, um, you know, people from District 3 or from anywhere in the city contact me and they have a concern, whatever that concern may be. And uh, for some reason, they haven't been able to get it resolved and, um, and they, they contact me and, and together we can work with the city and, and find a solution. I think that's been the most gratifying uh, thing so far. Uh, secondly, I, I think now going through the budget process and, and finding out the details of, of where we spend our money and giving my opinion as far as the, the proper allocation of those resources, I think that's also uh, gratifying for me as well. And making sure that we're spending our money wisely, we're, we're being conservative, and, and we're doing the right thing. You know? You know, it's funny, on District 3, when we, did, we, we drew the districts, I thought the most important part was um, so that people would know a district they lived in. It's so difficult in congressional districts and even state senator districts. So we've tried to do that, and it worked out that each district is kind of unique, yeah. if you will. So what's yeah. District 3? Now, what's the boundaries of District 3 first? And, um, well, the, well, the boundaries on the north end is Nolana. Uh, on the south end is Business 83. And then it's uh, Taylor Road to 23rd Street. On the north... Uh, east corner, there's a section that's carved out that's actually, I believe, in John Ingram's district um, where the, the recent apartment fire was located in. Actually, no, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, Zamora's district. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's uh, almost a, a rectangle. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> well, some, I remember we carved out one because they had relatives in that <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> So it, it wasn't exactly as bad, nearly, not nearly as bad as the state or federal area, but there was a, if you notice a couple of niches in there, there's a couple of reasons why, but pretty much they're rectangles. Follows the precincts for the most part, yeah. Now what, what do you think the uniqueness of your district is? Well, you know, I think it's, it's the older part of McAllen, and the uniqueness is a lot of families that live there, that live there for all their lives, you know, it's, it's a, a section of town that has, has been there for a long time. So it, it un presents unique challenges, you know, as far as infrastructure. Uh, and so uh, the, the challenge, I guess, for us is, is to get um, more people into our district, you know, and so maybe some beautification projects would, would be helpful. Uh, improving Business 83 and, and 23rd Street to make, to make uh, our section of town more inviting, more welcoming, uh, uh, I think is a challenge, but um, that's what makes it unique. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, happy about the new hike and bike trail that's coming along on uh, Benson Road. Uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to have uh, access, I mean, I'm going to be able to enjoy it uh, because I usually run along Benson, uh, and now that, that we're going to have this hike and bike trail north of... Um, North of, business, north of uh, 495, uh, it's going to be really nice. It's going to be really nice. And so, uh, uh, you know, it's not even done yet, and people are already starting to use it. Yeah. And so I think that's great. Yeah. yeah, but the proposal the other day we heard about um, possibly with District Number 1, I already met with the um, UTRGV need, uh, needs a uh, cross-country course. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, it's perfect timing, so we'll bring that back to you. And that's, that's in your district, I think, so you great. I think you'll... You enjoy that. Great. So, yeah, there's challenges. Uh, all different ones have the challenges. So I think, um, you know, Business 83, I, I hopefully in the, in the um, packets, we're going to have an incentive program for Business 83 and then 23rd Street and 10th Street. So um, I know you'll be very active in that. Yeah, that'd so. be great. That'd be great. E even looking at, at the zoning uh, in, in that corridor and trying to make it uh, easier for companies to... Um, to buy property, to maybe rezone it, and it's something that I think we ought to be looking at in the future. Now, you're not involved too much in state law, but I think you'll get as, as state, you know, we're home rule cities, and so we don't have to look for the state to do anything mm -hmm. um, for permission, but only restrictions. And so um, lately, the state has taken an opposite view of what cities should be. I, I, I always wonder what, what if these guys don't live in st cities or not, why they, <laughs> they don't do them. And hopefully, um, you'll see some of that uh, goes on. There's not much we can do as a city, That's right. uh, but uh, participate with our local legislatures. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking uh, from your standpoint of, of your district, 
one of the things about getting people to move back, you know, riding bikes and all that, and uh, let the let's move concept and mm -hmm. all that, mm -hmm. it's. As, as yesterday, I was going to get on my bike, but it was still 100 degrees at 7 o'clock. I thought we need to figure out how to overcome that or, you know, do more activities where people could. Um, in, in New York, where I grew up, you went, bo you did things inside in the winter because it was mm -hmm. too cold. So I, I was thinking we need to re maybe redirect some of the things, how we do it, um, so people can get out in a lot more activity in the summertime here. Yeah, I think it's challenging because because of the heat. But uh, as we uh, as our trees get get uh, bigger along our hike and bike trails, and as we have more water stations along there, I think it it make it a little bit easier. But definitely uh, in the evenings, it's it's nice yeah. or early in the morning. You know, I know a lot of people go jogging around 5 a.m. along 2nd yeah. Street and Bicentennial, and so... And we provide the, the security police are out there Security police are they out really there the bikes. That. I know that uh, they've talked, some of the, sc the security police people talk about, it's not just McAllen people, a lot of people from around the area, Mission and Edinburgh, come and go use our hike and bike trails. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, which, which makes a lot of sense. people out. Yeah. Definitely. So you're, you're a runner? I am. I, I like to run, and I've participated in two of the, our uh, half marathons. Well, it's 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 uh, the you get the marathon, the full marathon or the half marathon, and uh, I've done the half marathon twice, and I'm going to start preparing for for it again in, in in January, and so I'm looking forward to it. So I, I do do uh, uh, some running and some mountain biking as well. And so, Great. Um, those two things are, are what I like to focus on as far as uh, exercise. And so. I'm a, I'm a watch marathon. <laughs> I watch it. <laughs> you watch. I, don't, I don't run. Yeah, biking. You great. do a lot of biking, though. I right? do a lot of biking. You I really enjoy biking. biking. Uh, well, it's good. So you're going you're to start training now for the marathon. Yeah, I've been I've been uh, jogging a bit, but you know, as in, in the summertime, it's it, it's hot, and so you're a little limited. But um, I, I'm, I'm going to have to start increasing the amount of times that I go out the, and, and the longer runs, so I can get ready. Yeah, I do the full marathon. Pretty, you have to do one of those. Well, uh, you know, uh, I'd, I'd like to, but t 26 miles. You, you can know, commit here. Just, you're going to do <laughs> when you, when you're, <laughs> you have to, the first one. You have to do it in McAllen too. It's, they say it's a little easier, flatter. Everything. Definitely. And in January, you know, it's uh, it's a time of the year where it's usually maybe you know, 50s or 60s, especially okay. uh, in the morning. So it, it makes it. It makes it okay to go run. Okay, you're here to her first. Commissioner Kinkney is going to run in the marathon and do the full marathon. Uh, maybe not this year, but <laughs> next year. Okay. Well, I'm going at least a half marathon for sure this okay. year. Okay. Well, great. Yeah. Well, you know, I, it's really uh, I've worked with you before outside city commission. I'm really happy you're a city commissioner. I look forward to, to working with you and uh, and helping us make the city a great city that it is. So likewise, appreciate uh, it. Thanks for having me, and I look forward to working with you and and the rest of the commission. Uh, yeah, to make to make McAllen a better place. Definitely. So thanks for being here. And this has been your meeting with the mayor. Thank you very much.